Hello, dear developers. Akwaba. That is in my language tree, and it means welcome. So you're welcome to Netcode Hub channel. You know, this channel facilitates a lot of .NET lessons and projects. And talking about single lessons for Blazor Server App and .NET Mari. So check the playlist and we have a lot of lessons for you. Also, if today is the first time of watching this video from this channel, then you should check the playlist as well. And don't forget to subscribe too. If you watch the video and you're okay with it, give me a thumbs up. Now let's go to today's topic. Today we are going to talk about how to create search handler in shell in our application. When you create application to handle a lot of data, definitely you must have a search mechanism to handle that. If a user decides to search for a specific item, he must be able to do it. We're going to have a look today with a simple application, a simple project for this lesson. So make sure you have installed a Visual Studio, it will be 2022 preview or the 2022 stable one. And let's create a new project here. So click on the file and now new project. And you know, we are going in for .NET Mari. Click on next. And here I'm going to say that demo and here we're going to search handler. Click on the create and the next thing is we choose the target framework. We have 8.0 and 7.0, we go for 7.0 and we click on create to get the project created now when this project gets created we have to install some NuGet packages and there are two packages we're going to install first one is the community toolkit.mvvm and we're also going to install mvvm helper now why do you have to install the two packages the first one is the how you're going to code that's a coding style the mvvm that stands for module view model and the helper is going to allow us to add range, replace range in the collection view because you know we are going to have a lot of data in a collection view. So instead of looping through the data to add it one after the other, we can use a range and do it one to optimize the code. That is why we want to use that. Let's install this package. So right click on dependencies and I'll go to manage NuGet packages. So under browse tab, we're going to pass in community toolkit.mvvm. So we have the list over here. Let's install the first one. So you can see by Microsoft, the stable version is 8.2.1. Well, let's install that. Aside from that, we are going to install the helper. Let's accept it, mvvm.helper. And that is this by James. So let's install this package as well. We can now build the project to see. So our package is now built and this is what we're going to do. We are going to drive a product data from an API. I got this one, dummyjson.com. You see, we have this product here. And now when we make a query, this is what we have, almost about 100 data as for product so this is what we are going to um, do let's create a model for that and at this model we're going to use this so id title description price discount percentage rating um, stock brand category so let's maintain this now for thumbnails and images maybe you can do that later on let's grab this and now let's go to application so here, let's create a folder as models. So create a folder here, models. And now in this, let's create a file called product. You're going to say product. And now this product, we're going to have the following properties that we copied. Public class, we have product. And this is what we copied, so we can paste them here, so we can know what to do. Now, PROP, we have our int, and this is a product ID. We're going to have the next one. So P-R-O-P, that's a property. The next one is string. And here it is giving us title. That's product title. The next one, we can have, let's copy this and make. The next one is product description. So let's paste. So let's, this is title. Now we have here as description. Now we have here as price, and on this price here, we can use double, and let's set this as price. We have discount percentage, so let's copy this, and this is double two. So discount percentage, we have rating, now we have stock, so stock is 
integer so let's make stock the next one the next one is we have brand so that is string and now the next one we have category so that is also string category and the last one we have thumbnail so so this is going to be string okay so we can now grab or cut this now this is what we have for product so let's save that and now let's create our view model so right click on the project go to add then let's add a folder here and it's going to be view model so with this view model let's add a class so we're going to add a class here and we're going to use this for the main page so let's say main page view model now with this main page view model this that's going to be so it's going to inherit from that is observable objects instead so and that is coming from the package that we install that is this commit to kit so we can just cut this and now you put this here the reason why i made this i'm making a, the reference here is we install two packages now the first one the helper contains observable object too now this also contains it so let's specify here before we have an ambiguous exception and this must be public partial class let's create a constructor here now there's also one package that we need to install and that is the extension so we have to install let's go to the same place again and let's install that package so it is http so extension dot http so let's install this package too okay so it is we are good to go so let's continue with our view model so here the next thing that we're going to do here we are going to create a service to get the data from the api okay so let's see let's go to let's create a folder here so add a new folder and now we're going to say services let's add an interface and implementation class so new item then interface and now this is i product since you are doing it for product so let's make it i product service instead so i product service then let's create for let's add a class and this class is going to be product service so add a class and now we say product service now this is going to inherit from i product service so we can generate a constructor for this and now in here let's inject http client control period let's create an assigned field so we can initialize and use the http okay so let's create a method in this and now here is going to be public so this public we don't need all this so we can just clear this to optimize it now i'm going to have task and this is get product this is going to be a list of products so control period let's include the models so we have this let's close this now let's go to implement the interface well now this is what we have so we're going to say product is equal to let's call an await then we use the http dot get async and now in here we are going to create let's say response is equal to then we can have this product coming in so dot content 
so product dot let's wait so let's go for the api first now there's an api so let's grab this and now let's go to application and now in here let's paste it here then you're going to say product dot content dot read from json a from json async then we say list of product then return response okay so we have this and now here must be an await so we save this now when we run this we're going to have the data stored here from this response that is a hundred data now when we come to our view model let's inject the so i product service and now we create an instance we initialize it okay now here too let's create public we say observable uh, observable range collection and we say product so product control period let's include this model and now we say this is product then here you're gonna have get set we say it's equal to new now in here we can just create a list or maintain what we have here now we have this product so let's create a method in here so you're going to call the method let's create a method here so you have the method definition beneath now when this page is called we want to call this this uh, the method that we're going to create and that is get product from api so control period now let's generate a method for this and that is this method so in here we are going to call so var product is equal to await product service product service dot get product then we check if product is not equal to now then we are going to say this product that we have here the product list dot add range then we pass in the product okay so let's make here double so products okay now so now once you have this maybe we can just check something on top here so we say if this product dot count this product dot count is greater than zero then let's clear the container first before we add new one so dot clear so control D we format this now what is this doing so here we are going to store the data from the product from here now we are going to say that we're going to first check is the container having some data already if yes clear them get us a new container then I just add the range to the current one because you know when the page loads at any time we're going to call this method okay now we are done with this so let's register this in a program.cs so we copy this then we open the my program so we say builder dot services dot add transient then we're going to pass in this now in here control period let's include the link the reference we do same to its view so dot service dot add transient and now this is going to be main page now let's include the so builder.service 
dot add http so i product service then you're going to use product service now let's inject the view model to eight view so that's the main page so the code behind file we are going to put it here so let's comment this and this too so in here we're going to say that main page view model then let's bind the contest so binding contest is equal to this main page view model now let's go to the main page and now here let's comment this control k let's comment this okay so once you have this let's create a collection view so you have a collection view now in this collection view you want to have item source so item source but before this can work in our main page we have to specify this okay so I have an observable range collection here so you can have a product so let's 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 move on now the item source we're going to talk about binding and now here we go for we must have the product here the reason why we are not saying is we have to add a namespace and a data type so let's do that x m l n s namespace so let's put here as view model then we say clr dot namespace then we say demo search handler dot view model so this is it now in here let's specify the data type so view model dot main page view model so from that let's also specify the view model or the model so we say model is equal to clr namespace then we are going to use demo dot models okay so here we have this now as soon as we click on space you see we have products here we can use that now aside from this we can use collection view dot item template so item template let's see that is this one then in here we can have data template so with the data template we can have x data type and now here we have to specify the models dot and now here we're going to use this product model then in here we can specify frame so frame for this and maybe you want to add only the name of the item and the image so in the frame we're going to have horizontal stack layout then here you're going to have the first one is an image so this image we have source and the source we're going to bind it to that is a um, thumbnail okay so you have this thumbnail here and let's also do the same to let's add label and now this with the test we're gonna just bind this to um, title okay so with the horizontal layout let's do spacing and let's say 10 let's change this um, properties here I want us to use a simple one so you want to use ID title description price category and also image and now let's go to you want to use this API instead 
So fixtoyapi.com slash product. So this is what you want to use. So let's copy this. So let's replace this. All right. Now let's build the application and see. So restart this. All right. So let's go there. Now here's supposed to be image. So this is image. Let's do it again. All right, so you can see we have the image, we have the data, but the image images are too big. So let's, as you can see, let's make them small. So we come to the image size and we set the weight request to 50 and also height request to 50. So let's save this. Let's run the application again. All right, so you can see we have our product here, and that is exactly what we see um, here. So that is a product. Okay, so now this is what we have. We want to implement search here, so we can search this product. Now let's see. So let's add first a folder, and I'm going to make it as maybe handler. So and so let's stop this. And let's make let's name the folder as handler. So let's rename this. So we have handlers. Now, once you have this folder created, the next thing that we are going to do is we have to create a class in it. So let's add a new class. And now this is gonna be product search handler. So this is public. And aside from that, we have to inherit from this search, hand, search handler. Now, this search handler, we have to create a list. So let's create a public and that's an I list. So we pass in our product, control period, let's inject. The reference then we say this is product here then we can have our CSS so let's have let's write this method on query so on query change then in here we can now check so string dot is now or y space or you can use it's now or empty Okay, so or you can use string dot is now or white space. So we are making a check of the new value. So let's pass in the new value. So with this, we want to check the new value coming in. So if it is now or if it is now, then we want to. So let's do this. We can just make it something simple. Then return item source. Item source is equal to now. Else, we can just say that item source is equal to the product that we have here, the list of products. Dot, let's make this query. So dot where t max to t dot and now here we want to use title okay so the title dot to lowercase dot contains new value to lowercase then to list and aside from that we also have another method that we can write on and that is once item selected so override on item selected so with this we work on it later on let's go in the implement what we have here in the page so we navigate to the main page dot xml now on top here we can specify shell now shell dot we can have a search handler so this handler let's specify this but before we pass in this shell handler we have to make sure we have included 
this handler folder so let's come to and let's add namespace so we're gonna say search search handler then equal to crl dash namespace then that is demo search dot handler so that is just handless and here we can specify or we can now use the handler or the name that we specify so in here let me give you a space here so in here we can say that search handler that is this one and we can use the name of the handler that is a product search handler and here we can have a product so this product is equal to let's specify x resources so static and you want to use the view model that we have and aside from this view model we can have copy this we come to the view model and here we're going to paste it here like that then we're going to say dot product because when you go to the main page view model we have product over there let's see so you can see we have product here so that's this the one that we are referring to so we do that in the main page as you can see from here so let's close this now the next one that we can perform or we can add is we can add member now we can add um, display member name so display member name and now which one do you want to display that is a we have title so we have to pass in the title and we can grab that from this product so which of these so that is a title so let's copy this title and to the main page we paste it here meaning we want to display the title when you make a search there okay now with this let's run this and see so we have an exception here and it is saying unable to find a public or accessible internal static field or property right so in the view model main page view model so let's check that okay so here must be public static all right now let's run again so you can see that the app is now loaded but we are not seeing any display here but let's try to pass in something like f you can see we have the list over here if you pass in a we have the whole list that contains what a but the reason is why are we not seeing it here when we go to the view model you could say that we set this as static we can decide to make a copy of this and now we paste this so this is going to be product and now here we can make this as search product so search product and instead of making observable we can make it as just list so list of product then there's going to be static we can remove this one so this product that is what we are adding so let's make some amendment here so when the count here is greater than zero then clear that and we can also do the same thing to this so when this that is search product so when search product dot count is also greater than zero then clear it that is when we have a new item coming in okay and if the results coming here is not equal to now then product dot product we are going to add a range and also this search product as the list we are also going to add range so let's see if we can add range here so product okay now let's save this now let's run this again so when we go to our main page we're going to specify this as search product so dot search product and that is going to maintain as product so and this is static and when we go there we have search products as static search products static okay let's refresh this so you can see that now we have the data over there now let's try to search and see so you can see we have the pop-up as well now you can see this is very nasty you want to format this there are some few features that we can also add let's go to the main page here the next one is within here we can add let's say show result so show result let's set this to true you can also specify query icon and as you can see, we have query icon and we have clear icon too so clear icon now if you check my resources uh, images i have these two svg files here so query i'm going to make as search so search icon and with the clear i'm going to also make it as um cancel so they are here so now let's see now also let's see 
we can also add search um, visibility we have search visibility box and now uh, with this box we can decide to make it collapsible or expanded so defaultly it is expanded as you can see from it, it is expanded so we can make it collapsible so let's see what we can do here collapsible to collapse it and we can talk about placeholder so search product and maybe that's what you want to pass in search product so now you can see that from here the the button or the box here it is off as soon as i click on this button we have this search box and you can now pass in the text that you want to display or you want to search so you can see we have all the things that we need okay as soon as i click back you can see i have this search indicator icon over here okay now let's see so if i choose this if i make a search and I, if i click on let's say the first one what should happen also the format here isn't nice at all so can you format this yes we can let's see how to format that so let's come to the template here and now in here we can specify data template so let's say first search handler then product handler dot item template so within this item template we can now use let's copy this one and now let's paste it here you want to use frame and you want to bind the name over here so you see that we are adding the image and also the name now it is saying that the property item does not support um this does not support frame yeah it's one because we forgot to specify data template so let's do that data template and now we can now paste it inside data template also with the edge data type we have to specify so the models dot product now we have this so let's run this and see what we have now so let's click on the search button and now you can see we have the indicator the icon here search the name is what search product and that is a clear icon and also the query icon as soon as i pass in something like this i have the clear indicator and we see we have all the images displayed nicely okay so if i click on this what should happen so if i click on this button like this i want to now get the whole data into the next page and i'll view the whole thing how can we do that let's see how to go about that so what we need to do here is to create a view model so let's create a view model here and it's going to be product detailed view so product details view then let's add a model now aside from that we have to also create a view for this product detail so right click and now add new item and .NET Mary. We go for the content page, and now here is going to be product details. So product details. Let's bind the view to this product detail. So let's go to the product detail code behind file, and now in here we say product detailed view, product details view model. Then we say, and we have to bind. So binding contest is equal to this predator view model control period let's add that okay so now we have this we have to go to the my program.cs and i register this so let's copy this one and we cannot make a copy of this and paste and i'll change this to put a detailed view to product detailed view model then we can have the product details here so product details okay so we have this now let's go back to we have the product detail view model and we have it here let's go and make this public partial so public partial class also let's go to the product page now let's add the namespace and also the model so xms we say that this is view model and clr dash namespace and here we're going to say demo search dot view model and we specify x data type as view model dot product data view so let's build the view here to get the data so let's go to the main page now here we can go in and grab this so this frame let's copy this go to product detail and now let's paste that in here so let's copy this here now you can now paste this so you can put this as stack layout 
and now we specify like this okay so we have image that is the first one and and the product you we can have the title and the price and etc so let's let's do that so the first one here is going to be like image and i believe here we can use let's specify this here so we say here is image then the next one is going to be image so we can just make a copy of this then we say product name let's do something like this so and here will be title and we can make another one as price so price here and let's set this to price so when we check our model that's the product we have id title description price category and image so we have this uh, description and also category left we have the price and image so, so let's finish that you can just copy the same thing then maybe you can paste it and one more so this is going to be category and now here will be category and the last one description and this will be description so we now have this now what you're going to do here is let's go to our student view model and now here this has to inherit from observable object and now inside the observable object we are going to create product then we say product so with this let's set observable property against it so we can have a public variable let's go to the app shell and initialize this let's register route routing dot register route and now name of so the first one here is the product detailed then type of so register route now here must be bracket first so we have name of and now type of and let's pass in the same product detailed okay because you're going to click and it has to send us to that page so let's go to the handler and I update here so here let's specify um, navigation route so prop and now here is going to be string and now we say this is navigation route so we have the set and get accesses so from that we come to this side and now we have to make a check so if let's specify this string or we can say that if string is null or empty so that is a navigation route okay and we can also check or uh, if this string is not null or white space so let's use it is not the opposite one so if they are not then we are going to continue on so we let's create variable as navigation parameters so navigation parameter is equal to let's have let's create a dictionary so a new dictionary of you know dictionary deals with um a key and the values and now with this object we can open this and specify let's say this is product details then what is the value it is this item coming in so when we are done doing that we have to close this then we can call await shell dot current dot go to async then let's specify the navigation route so that is it so let's go to the product details page and now in here let's specify that is a main page rather so in here we have to specify navigation route and now the navigation route here is, is going to be product detailed view detailed so that's a product details because that is a content page that we have created here product details so there's a navigation route that you want to navigate to so you know when you navigate with uh, parameters with object parameters we have to accept it so we can accept it in the product detail view model and on top here we have to use query parameters to accept it so we say that query property then name of so what is which name are you going to use that is a student details so that is a product details so let's pass the product details here so product details and now what is a query id query id is let's go to the search search handler and now there is an id so let's copy this and let's come to product detail view model and now paste it in here so we have this object to, to display now let's see when we go to the product details we have to get this but before we can have that we must add product dot then we can use the image so let's first check the product detail view we have this product oh, so this must be product like this so control period <laughs> let's include models good 
now you go back there and now you can have image attached to so you can just grab this and our title price category and description so this is what we need to do so you, this must be in vertical layout so let's grab all this now let's make it vertical layout and let's paste this here let's run this application and see the output all right so the page is now loaded now let's see so i have on here the list as you can see already click on the search button and now let's try to search something like f so i want to search for men's casual premium slim fit t-shirt so if i click on this it has to navigate me to the student detail page but if you see it is not happening here so let's figure it out okay so let's check now let's go back to the product details view model let's see so we have the product here and the object property all right so i believe you've seen it already so you're supposed to be product then we have this so that is it let's now let's run this and see so let's refresh this now let's make a search so i pass in s so i want to see for maybe samsung this tv yeah so you see back check the image now let's format it well so let's go back to the product detail and here you don't want to grab that image name so this is the image so let's cut this the source must be binding then we back to this oh okay so you see we made the image 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 so instead of label we made it as image so let's clear all this let's copy this now let's so here is going to be name and now with this we're going to have as the same type price so let's have this as price and this category so we set here to category and um last one that is description so the description so that is it. now let's run this and see so let's set pattern of this so we have all these and they're in the frame so we can have pattern maybe 10 in this now let's run this and see so let's search now passing s so john hardy so I click on this now because i have the image over here I have the name, the price, the description, and everything. As so I can just go back, and now let's search for another one. So silver dragon, and I have the ring too, and now I have everything, the description too. Okay, now this is very cool. So let's see. Now the next thing to do is, you're almost done. But if I click on this too, I want to navigate to the same page. Okay, so let's do that. Now let's go back to the main page here and what we have this we have to add so in here we can have frame then we can have maybe inside this frame we can have frame dot um guest child organizers then we can have tap guest child recognizer okay so with this we can have command and we can specify command parameters too so the parameters is going to be binding dot and now let's go for the command so we go to the main page so we can just go to this place and we can grab this so let's go to the main page main page view model yeah and now in here let's specify maybe public and this is async task so let's say details then we can let's paste this here and this is coming in with product and you create an object as product so in here you say if product it cuts you you can use if product is now then you want to return else then we create a um, navigation parameter like this dictionary and now this object and now we say that this product it is the object here we are way to go to name so name of now this name of is going to be the product detail page so product detailed then you pass in this parameter as well so now let's refresh this and see now we have an error here we have to bind this so let's go to the main page and here binding so before that let's put this as relay command and now in the main page we can specify this as binding then details command okay so sorry for this i i commented this for a reason we, we, we talk about this when we are done with this one binding source so it's called to relative source then you're gonna have ancestor type so this is ancestor type you're gonna have x view model then you're gonna have main page view model so after this we can specify the path where that command is 
and the path is detailed command so detailed command so that is it that is a command that you're going to use okay so i think all sets now let's build this again all right so let's click on any of this so men's cutting jackets and let's see if it's going to navigate okay so it is not navigating let's find out so when we check our code you can see that from here we omitted s let's refresh it so let's click on this and see now okay so it's going to hit this then we navigate and let's see so we are in so let's take off this let's check the second one so we are in here we go back and we can check this solid good you can see we have it so let's go back as well next one and you can see it is navigating now when we make a search to let's say this is good so we want this rain jacket and you can see we have this rain jacket here now let's add indicator so when it loads you see when it starts for the first time i want to get the indicator over there so now with this let's add a collection view here not, not the collection view that's the activity indicator yes and let's have maybe color as red then we can have is running is running let's set it true and let's set is visible we're gonna set this to binding it's busy so let's see it's busy now let's go to and let's set margin so margin is 50 let's set 200 and um, let's see 50 50 you want to be in the middle so we set top to 200 side 50 side 50 then we set this so let's make this 20 20 20 20 okay now let's maintain this and let's go let's see how we can make this as 100 yes yeah, okay let's go to the main page view model so this must be void so let's first check now when this product when this method is called you want to set is busy to true so let's create bool then we say is busy then let's set observable property on it so in here when this product is loading we say that is busy we call it true now when it's loaded you want to say it's busy equal to force equal to force now let's save this so let's go back to the main page here and now let's set we have set it to is busy already so they saying this is not found let's see did we save it here main page did we save that we have is busy and that is this one so let's go back again and let's set okay so we let's paste this here and let's run the application so let's restart it so you can see that it is they have the indicator it's, as soon as the data comes in then it is off now okay so now let's talk about the search you can see from here if i type in this, this format is ugly because i commented this now if i bring the the problem was from the frame so let's take off the frame and now let's uncomment this and see so let's save this and now let's refresh it again and see so we have our indicator loading when the data comes in then it is off now okay so we have this now let's see if i click on this it navigates me to the detail page now let's see with the search so if i type on g to get good i could see now it has navigated us to the page let's get again so d and now here you can see the format here since we are not using the frame there's a format that we have so let's see if we can have a different format for this so let's take the one off and let's set 
there is let's set margin to maybe 10 okay now let's save this let's refresh all right so let's see now i'm going to pass in this and i could see this okay so we have a nice one the image and also the the title if i click on it it navigates us to the page all right so i'll put this uh project at the uh, github i'll leave it under the description so you can just grab the source code over there that is it for this video thank you so much for watching if you like what i'm doing please give me thumbs up subscribe to the channel as well and i'll catch you up next time